Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to be talking about today is part 24 of my neck through guitar build because the guitar is basically completely finished. And at the end of this video, I'm going to have still photos so that you can get some close-up shots of the finished guitar. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to do a little bit of final setup work on this guitar. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. The first step in the setup process is going to be to tune and intonate the strings. So first I'll tune each string using just standard tuning. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play each string first open, then I'll play the 12th fret harmonic, and then I'll press the string down to the 12th fret. And I try to get each of those notes to be identical. So in order to do that, I have to either move the saddle forward or backward to accomplish intonation. Now obviously tuning the open string is easy, but then playing the 12th fret harmonic and then the string pressed to the 12th fret, what that does is it's going to tell us if the string is either flat or sharp when played at the harmonic or when pressed to the 12th fret. So what I have to do is if the string plays flat, I move the saddle forward. If the uh, string plays sharp, that means I have to move the saddle back. And that's how I achieve intonation with each string. Once I have the strings tuned and intonated, the next thing I want to do is check the neck relief. And I'll do this with my notch straight edge and feeler gauges. And I'm going to measure it at roughly the 8th to the 10th fret. And what I shoot for typically is about 8 thousandths of an inch of relief, which is exactly what I have here. Now if the truss rod needed to be adjusted, I would do that at this stage. And I would do it in very tiny increments, frequently checking with that notch straight edge until I get the exact amount of relief that I want. Of course, adjusting the truss rod throws it out of tune again, so I want to make sure that it's tuned, and then I can check the string action over the 12th fret using my little LMI string action uh, digital gauge. One of the challenges of doing a setup is that you've got a bunch of different processes that seem to be unrelated, but they do affect one another. So whenever I adjust the neck relief or string action, I have to double check to make sure that the strings are, are in tune and adjust as necessary. Then I have to go back and double check my uh, neck relief as well as the string action and make any fine adjustments until I get to a point where the strings are in tune and the action and neck relief is exactly where I want it to be and isn't going to change. And of course, anytime you change string gauge or to a different tuning, it throws everything off. So if you're really sensitive to the setup of your guitar, but like to change strings or change tunings, it really is beneficial to understand how to do all this stuff so that you can make those adjustments and keep the guitar playable no matter what the situation may call for. And when it comes to setting the radius, I like to set the string height for the high E and the low E string and then I'll place my gauge on the strings to see how they're contacting the edge of that gauge. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press each string down to the last fret and make sure that uh, the pickup height is set correctly. I want it to be as close to the strings as I can get it without the strings hitting the pickups or the pole pieces when the strings are pressed down to that last, uh, in this case, 24th fret. And then after the basic height of the pickups has been set, I can go back in and adjust the height of the adjustable pole pieces to get as close to each string as I can get them. And um, it's really kind of a, a visual process. 
And I've seen guys struggle to figure out why their guitar has such terrible string buzz without realizing it's not the frets, it's the fact that maybe the pickup is too close to the string causing vibrations. Uh, another issue to be aware of is that the closer you place the pickups to the strings, potentially the less sustain your guitar will have because of the magnets and the effect that they have. But then once I've got all that work done, I'll sit down with the guitar and I'm going to play it acoustically and I'll press each string down to each fret, playing all the way up and down the fretboard. I'll do string bends and um, I'll look for or listen for string buzz. And if I've done all my fret work correctly and have all the um, uh, frets leveled nicely and um, the truss rod adjusted uh, correctly, I'm not going to have any problem with string buzz. And in this case I was lucky, there was no string buzz so the frets are good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strings once again. And, and when I say remove I'm just going to uh, remove them from the headstock and then lay them back. And this will gain access to the frets and that uh, gives me the opportunity to polish and buff out the frets to a mirror-like shine. And of course I need to protect the fretboard here so I'm going to go ahead and mask it off. Uh, in this case some folks like to do just one fret at a time. They'll mask it off, they'll uh, polish it and then buff it and then move on to the next fret. But uh, masking tape isn't that expensive so I'm willing to just completely mask off the entire fretboard before I begin the work. The frets that I installed on this guitar are stainless steel frets and stainless steel tends to scare a lot of would-be luthiers because they think it's so hard to work with it but in my opinion it's not that difficult and certainly isn't going to scare me away. But the first thing I have to do is to remove the tool marks and I'll do that with some P220 grit sandpaper. Then I'll follow that up with Norton synthetic steel wool pads and I start out with the single lot red which is the coarsest. Then I'll move on to the green double lot. Then I'll continue with the gray triple lot and I'll finish with the white four lot steel wool. And I love this stuff because unlike real steel wool, this product isn't going to leave particles that can contaminate your guitar. It can contaminate the finish and it can contaminate the pickups. So I prefer using the synthetic product and it really leaves a great finish that I could, if I wanted to, I could just leave it as is but I do like to take it to that next level. And then speaking of that next level, I like to grab my Dremel with a buffing wheel and some metal working polishing compound and I'll buff out the surface to a mirror-like shine. And you got to be really careful here because you don't want to linger for too long on the fret wire or you'll generate enough heat to break the bond of any glue that may have been used to install the frets and it can cause the frets to lift out of the slot. So all it takes is a light touch to get a really nice mirror-like shine on the frets. And then I'll just wipe off the residue with a microfiber cloth and it really brings out that gorgeous shine. And you can see here every fret gets that treatment and not only does it look great but with stainless steel it plays great especially if you like to bend your strings over the frets. Buffing the frets will produce some residue and even though I masked off the fretboard some of that residue can still migrate under the tape and onto the wood. So I like to take a little uh, goo gun and wipe off that excess residue from the wood as well as the frets themselves. With the frets and the fretboard nice and clean, it's time to restring the guitar.
And I know that some of you watching the last couple of episodes were going crazy seeing that excess string sticking out of the tuner. So now it's the time to clip that off with my Dunlop string cutters. Now anytime I remove and reinstall strings and retune and check intonation, I like to go back and double check to make sure that the neck relief is correct and that the string action uh, over the 12th fret is exactly what I want it to be. These are all little things that can change every time you uh, remove and then reinstall strings and I just want to make sure that everything is going to be dialed in exactly right especially since this guitar is going to be shipped to its new owner soon. And since I'm happy with the uh, adjustment of the truss rod, I can go ahead and reinstall the truss rod cover. At this stage, the guitar is pretty much completely finished. But what I will do is I'll plug it into my amplifier and I'll play each string at each fret. Um, I'll strum it, I'll uh, bend notes, and then I will play it clean, I'll play it dirty, and I'm gonna check the uh, volume and tone pots to make sure that they're doing exactly what I want them to do and make sure that the three-way switch works correctly, that there's no short in the jack. Uh, I want to make sure that the pickups sound good in the position that they're in, that, that I don't have to raise or lower them. And I'll just kind of fiddle around with it for a little bit. And I'll end up probably hanging this guitar up for probably several weeks before the guitar gets shipped and that allows the strings to fully stretch out and it gives the wood to settle and then I can go back and I'll double check again before I ship it out to make sure that the neck relief is what I need it to be that the um, string action is correct that it's tuned and that it's intonated and that overall I'm satisfied that the guitar is as good as it's gonna get before it lands in the hands of the customer All right, guys. Well, that's it for episode 24, and it's the last episode in this guitar building series. I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I've enjoyed building the guitar. And in future episodes, I'm going to start building another guitar, which is going to be a V-shaped guitar, so be sure to check that out. At any rate, uh, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, again, welcome. I hope I've earned your subscription. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase plans for guitars and the tools that I use to build guitars. Or you can visit my YouTube merch shelf down below the description for this video. And not only can you purchase plans for guitars and tools, but you can also purchase t-shirts as well. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for the next guitar building series. Music